What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young. Welcome back to our weekly YouTube live stream. If you're in the States, happy Thanksgiving. And if you weren't, happy Thursday and Friday of last week. We're excited to be back live every Friday again. And today we got a phenomenal guest. She was just recently on our virtual summit with all about indie heroes. And she really talked about some great strategies. That video is being edited right now and will be posted very shortly. So stay tuned. She's gone on to do some amazing things, and we're going to talk all about the early growth strategies that really led her to 2 million plus users. Okay, that's the operative term, user. So, I really want to emphasize that. So, without further ado, let's bring her on. Her name is Anya, and Anya, I'm going to give a shot. Wisoska, and she is the founder of Rooted here. Anya, Hi. welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Congrats on all the success of Rooted. And I think the biggest takeaway for me from our virtual summit was like, you know, your ASO strategies, your PR strategies, how you decided to pick the right keywords early on that weren't as com competitive and got that number one ranking for that keyword and really, you know, helped drive those revenues, gave that momentum early on. But knowing what you know now with all the knowledge that you have and growing rooted to, you know, Apple featured, all the accolades you've got. How would you launch rooted today if you were starting to, if you're going to launch it today? I think the, the two of the main things that you mentioned there, the ASO and press releases, I would definitely do that again. The only difference is because what the press releases did is they gave me those initial hundred, couple hundred users. But what I would do is make sure that the reviews API is in the app earlier, because the real benefit mm -hmm. from having those early users is starting to get those user reviews. So that's something that I didn't do. Thankfully, people who felt passionate about Rooted still left a comment and review, and yeah. that definitely helped boost ASO. But I would put that in a little sooner. And then, of course, probably the biggest learnings are around monetization. That's something that I didn't feel super comfortable doing, given like how rooted is for people who suffer with anxiety and panic attacks. I didn't want things in their face and paywalls and ads and stuff. And I think I would still not do ads. However, there are different ways to incorporate paywall that I've learned now that are still pretty classy. They're not in your face. And, and I think, yeah, I would do more of that. Can we talk a little bit about the, whoops, sorry, let me hide this real quick. Can we talk a little bit about the monetization? I know you talked a little bit about briefly at the virtual summit. What were, let's unpack that a little bit. What were your concerns or what were your thought process around that? My thought process was if somebody's experiencing a panic attack, they don't want to see an ad and I don't want to interrupt their experience with an ad. I see. And I felt the same about paywalls at first. However, it turns out that in introducing a paywall, I didn't actually get complaints about it. And that was something that I had internalized and thought I would, but I didn't actually. And when I did it, especially in the onboarding flow, introducing a paywall mm -hmm. there was like extremely effective for Rooted. Revenue increased by over six times in just one month. So that was a game changer. And so you do have those thoughts like, oh, what if I did that earlier? But of course, that's not how life works. But, you know, when you ask that question of what I would do different, I would definitely include a paywall earlier on in the flow. Awesome. The, I wanted to bring it up and I don't want to lead you. And that's why I was kind of talking about it generically, because I do think that I've talked to a lot of people. They, they, they said the same thing you did. You know, like, hey, I don't want to be so disruptive to our users. I want them to see our product feel our product, love our product, and then if they eventually want to pay, pay. And I think it's almost counterintuitive because what we found is, you know, I'm talking like the, the evil marketer here, but like, hey, the more people pay, the more they pay attention and the, the more they actually use your app, the more they love your app and, they, and all that. So like, it's a snowball effect. So that's why I say, look, build a, build a, build a good app, but, you know, try to encourage your users to pay too. Yeah, I think somebody I really admire, I had this question with them, about you know the paywall and how that feels i mean i admire you too steve <laughs> just just for the record here. i thought you were um, going to talk about me but okay <laughs> but in addition to you uh, somebody who had yeah. a, a great successful exit with their app he told me that he feels fine showing that paywall early on because he knows he put so much work into creating a great product 
And that is something I can resonate with. I mean, I'm always working on rooted and making it better. So I know that, you know, there's so much love and work has gone into it. So that type of mentality also helps. I think with rooted, just the fact that some people struggling with panic attacks might sometimes be out of work or they might not have access to income at the time. Like I still want to make sure that rooted is accessible to, to them and that there's no financial barrier. So I think that's where I kind of struggled. Like it kind of the social impact part of the business and the monetization sometimes like fight each other a bit. Yeah, no, it's definitely there. And I know, you know, we went through the app in that video, but like you've done an amazing, amazing job just from the UI. I love this little, this icon. I didn't know what to call it. I was going to call it a creature, but I didn't want to offend you either. So I was like, I love this icon as well. And as you can see, like, even despite you're like, hey, I wish I put in the review prompts, you've got some amazing reviews, 4.8 with 4.8 thousand reviews. And that's just in the US app store. So congratulations on all that. Yeah, that's kind of cool that it's 4.8 and 4.8 right now. Yeah, right. You want me to take a screenshot? <laughs> <laughs> put that in my screenshot memory box. Do you do that? I do that. I totally I do, do that. You're, you have to send me yours. I do, you know, like I took a screenshot for you when you got featured on the app store and I was kind of sharing it on that. So that was really, really cool. I love seeing friends just get featured. It was a prominent feature. You had your face on there. So it was really cool to see that on the app store. Yeah, that was awesome. Thanks for sending that. Yeah. So one thing I want to talk about, you mentioned paywalls and some of the new paywalls that you've discovered. Do you mind sharing any of those new tips? Yeah, so really it was where I put the paywall. So there's this mm. interesting idea that, you know, when you have locked screens, people know that that stuff is locked. And that's what I had for a very long time. It's just, you know, once a user got to a certain page, they would know what's a paywall, what's not. But then I started introducing I things like having in the side menu, there's a dark mode feature. And that's basically, I'm looking for things that are non-essential that are like, additional mm -hmm. features that you could pay for. And uh, if you, yeah, that stats icon, dark mode. So that will send you to a paywall. And there's just a few things that, you know, will set, that's not loading properly though. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. That's what happens when. Oh no, I was thinking like, my oh, screen? Is that I need to figure out. Um, yeah, like the images didn't load, the text did, but uh, yeah, so. Oh, I see. In addition to having that there, like having it again in the onboarding flow was huge. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, made sure that users actually see it because they're not always going to go to those lock lessons. So yeah, those are kind of the two main tips that I, that were effective for rooted. If I can add, no, oh, yeah, things aren't loaded. It's it's my internet, okay? It's not the app. It is definitely my internet. I'm having some internet <laughs> problems. I should have just restarted the computer. But, you know, we talked about this big red button and then just the genesis, the idea that of it, and you wanted a big red button that just said, hey, I'm having a panic attack. Press it, and go straight into it. So it's these mm -hmm. little UIs. And I just love this, the brand that you've built with this mascot that's like super there he's friendly but he's like you know it, i'm sure you can explain it more but the sense i get is you know he's in us and he's he's not super scary but you know he can be squashed too he's not like he's a friendly monster he's like cast for the ghost i guess totally yeah you totally got it the idea is to kind of look at him like you would look at anxiety, it is something kind of, mm -hmm. you know, not not beautiful. But at the end of the day, it's also not so <laughs> serious. If we start to familiarize ourselves with these feelings, we're less afraid of them in the long run. And that really does help minimize the fear associated with a lot of the sensations with anxiety. So it's like a cognitive behavioral therapy type of uh, practice. But I just wanted to illustrate mm -hmm. it in a way that, you know, seems pretty accessible and friendly and approachable to many because you can read a medical textbook right and feel a certain way and then you can look at a an image of a guy like this and feel a different way so that was my goal here. yeah mm -hmm. yeah completely true you know one of the things i'm gonna have jake moore from superwall on in january and he's he's got this great tweet out there that people have shared with me and he talks about like install to paywall view being the most important metric and i've been saying something very similar i don't know if i got it from him but i was like you know that is the most important metric to your point on you about like the onboarding right adding it to the onboarding like that is the most critical 
the most critical metric. And then the second most is like paywall views, actually. The more, and you kind of touched on it, it's like the more you can highlight that, yes, there are some paid features in there, the more revenue you you'll actually increase so you know some some of my clients they have like headway is a great example okay they show a 50 percent offer on every single open like every time you open the app they show you a 50 percent offer and it's very interesting I'll, I'll show you the the app right now i've had this for a couple of months by the way and every time i open the app you will get this offer it might be so this offer and so it's true like the more you show your paywall the more you're going to increase conversions and it's not going to be as distracting as we think our end users our end users are not thinking about us uh, as much as we think <laughs> they're thinking about us i guess yeah you're totally right that was like a big lesson for me was just knowing that okay these users are used to seeing paywalls many understand that making an app is expensive and maintaining is expensive yes. and it is a business and so that's that's been really helpful. I just noticed there, it said Black Friday, 50% off. What does it say when it's not Black yeah. Friday? It just says something else. They something had Thanksgiving, else. They'll, they'll have random stuff. Yeah, I can show you screenshots if you want, but yeah, they, they always have it. <laughs> but cool. they just change yeah. it based on the timing. Yeah. All right, yeah. I wanna say hi to a few people. What's up, Noah? Yash is here as well. Luke, Angelina, good to see you. Angelina, you're becoming a, a regular now. Herbie, we'll take a look at your app. Herbie, good to see you. Adrian, gang, looking forward to this. I barely have 800, 200 reviews globally. 2 million users is truly astonishing from indie dev. Congrats. Yeah. I was like, yeah. hey, I had to beg her and like, like sort of stalk her to make sure she, come, she came on. All right. I did go all out <laughs> to get her on. What's up, Ricardo? And all then right. we I, the other share the story yeah, that we just randomly met in person in San Francisco. Like we didn't know the other person would be there. After communicating online yeah. for a while, that was really fun. <laughs> that was a really fun. That was a really fun party. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that event by Louis. So, yeah, hopefully we'll get to do more yeah. of those next year. Yeah, yeah. In person stuff. I'll sync up like, with you. Yeah, for sure. I I'm all for remote stuff. I think it just has made certain meetings so much more accessible for so many entrepreneurs who couldn't fly to you know big cities all the time. But meeting in person does have its charm. I feel like now I know you way better. And, and yeah, it's it's really fun. It is really fun. Okay. I'm gonna move on to is, you know, I felt a lot of this like doubt or concerns, or I know you said in our pre-interview stuff, like you dealt with a lot of no's. So how do you get through that throughout your journey? Is there a time where you felt like maybe you wanted to give up as we get into like, you know, new year's resolution season? Yeah, I think there's plenty of times where I wanted to give up on certain aspects. So even going yeah. back to like the featuring on the app store, I sent in so many submissions and I never heard back. Like I would just craft these. I would put time into it. I'd put care into trying to create like an interesting story that they might, you know, that the editorial team might find useful, right? Because I know they're getting so many pitches every day. So I thought that, you know, if I really put time into this, then it might bite, but it took so many times. Like it was probably like 15 submissions before I heard back from them wow. or 20. Like it was a lot to the point where I was like, am I wasting my time? Because there's that Einstein quote, right? About don't do the same thing and then expect different results. However, when right. it comes to business and promoting yourself, you kind of do just have to be that squeaky wheel and keep going and going and going. So in terms of what made me keep going, I think it was just the idea of being featured and knowing that like I am a bootstrapped app, you know, super small, like I need things like that to promote rooted. And also knowing that people were leaving five star reviews, sharing the best feedback about rooted, it made me feel less. It made me feel a little shameless when I was pushing rooted because I know it's like this is really helping people like this should be out there. Like I just need you guys to see that. So that's kind of the mentality right. I adopted when I was discouraged. I love that. What do you think finally got Apple to say yes? Was it a timing thing? Was it you changed the pitch at all? Well, I changed it every single time I submitted. So <laughs> that, yeah, I always tried to, in terms of like a practical strategy here, like I would kind of take whatever world event was happening that month. So like October's mental health day. 
and you know right now the world cup is going on like i would take something like that and i would craft a story mm -hmm. about rooted in relation to that event just to make their lives easier and that's also the same strategy i use for press releases in case that's helpful for anyone listening because that has been also quite fruitful for rooted as a small app so i don't know what it is and they will probably never tell me so <laughs> you know i just kind of kept kept going and kept trying oh yeah that's our event now we did a visualization for athletes basically and called it get game ready it was I fun love it. I, no, I, it. I wanted to pull it up i wanted to talk to you about this too the in-app event have you guys seen any traction from it or what are your thoughts initial thoughts on these in-app events i think that it's quite favorable to create an in-app event mm. in terms of metrics. I'm not seeing like an overwhelming amount of installs and downloads because of the in-app event, but I think that it's something that Apple does really want developers to keep using. So I'm going to keep going with it. And I think that it does make a really, it's an additional way to be featured in a collection or something, right? When you have an in-app event, they have special tabs for in-app events. So I think it's totally worth it. Uh, especially if you don't have a big ad budget and you are trying to get organic traction. Have you started any paid marketing or are you still relying mainly on organic stuff? So I did previously, this is maybe another good example. Oh, see, even the app store is not loading. I feel better now. <laughs> I was like, oh. oh, it always takes forever for me. Cool, I cool. This. I also had a bit of a letdown when I first started doing paid advertising. I had a friend who had quite a few apps and his paid ads were working well. And, and he was like, yeah, you just, mm -hmm. you know, it's super easy. Like put the money in and then this is your ROAS and like nothing worked for me. And I, and then I also felt a bit like what is wrong with me or rooted? Like I, I didn't know what it was, but now looking back, I understand that, you know, I didn't have the paywalls in the right places. I didn't have, a paywall like anywhere <laughs> except for the locked content. Mm. So I think that made the advertising just not make sense for me. Like I, I think I lost money on that at first. So right now I am prepping to go back at it. I've done a lot of, of course, in product optimization since then in terms of monetization. Nice. So I think I'm gonna start in Q1 here. Nice. With a bit of paid ads. What channel did you use? I used Facebook, Instagram, and, and the thing is, it wasn't installs that I wasn't getting. I was getting a lot of installs. However, they just, nobody was converting. And so it just didn't make yeah. sense from a bootstrap perspective. You know, I'm not a big company doing awareness campaigns. Like I actually really need that return. So that was a big learning lesson for me too. And I did get discouraged for sure. So I think maybe what helped there, going back to your earlier question, is just taking a break, focusing on other things. And now I'm going to come back to it. And I think it's so critical to have this like support circle that you trust right like and that knows stuff because i talked to a lot of people and they the one thing that i hear from them is like i just don't know if i did anything wrong and i'm like i don't think you did anything wrong you know it's just the nature of the beast like sometimes mm -hmm. it's facebook like this is the problem with facebook so mm -hmm. i just talked to somebody yesterday and i was like look you didn't do anything wrong i'm not here to tell you you did something wrong i'm here to tell you like this is what i would change but like too many times with entrepreneurs we feel like Oh, it's not going right. Do we do something wrong? We don't know enough, right? Like, and sometimes, especially if it's a new thing, we're like, we just don't know what we don't know. We end up, I think, you know, end up overspending, being like, oh, this guy's an expert, and let's bring this person on and then spend more money. That is wasteful. But I like how you went back and you're like, look, my paywalls not mm -hmm. optimized. Let's do that, and then let's go back to the drawing board totally. and yeah, try it again. Yeah. Okay. We'll see what happens in Q1. Luke yeah i love it well you have to come back i'll have to beg you all right hi anya luke has a question can you talk more about the press releases please do you use a distribution network or target publishers directly and how many downloads would typically get from a good press release yeah so i would use a sort of like an agent i suppose and they had a contact list and that's how i would do distribution is just work with like a single person that would distribute it However, what was also effective was looking for actual journalists who write about topics like mental health and apps. And I would create my own little database. I would just really use LinkedIn and, and Google. Sometimes they do share their emails there. And sending out personalized messages was a lot of work. But again, as a bootstrap company, it seemed to be 
effective enough. I'd say like one out of 10 was effective, but when that does happen, you know, there are, in addition to a little download boost that you'll get with the press releases, you'll also get that impact on your SEO and ASL in the long run. So the latter wasn't as measurable for me, but I'd say, I do believe that it was a contributor, like looking back now. Yeah. And, you know, I've come around press release, especially after our conversations, because I, I used to do a lot of PR in my early days and we just don't do it because I felt like it wasn't for productive or effective in terms of downloads. I was like, oh, it does great, but like it's not that many downloads as people are expecting. Maybe because it's doing for clients, they're expecting a lot more than what we can give them. But I also love that you can use this as social proof. And I love what you said exactly. with the SEO strategy, because I do think that we don't, I'm, I want to focus more on the SEO and the web SEO side of things a little bit in 2023. And I do think that that's a powerful thing to think about too. Don't just think yeah. about purely downloads. That's a great point. And I, yeah, to reiterate too, like it's not a bump that continues. Typically with a press release day, you'll right. get a bump and then it'll disappear. And so it really depends on like what your strategy is and what you're doing with that bump. Yeah. For me, getting reviews all was huge. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. Please continue. For me, getting reviews from those bumps was huge. And that, again, helping ASO through that. Nice. Oh, you mean like App Store reviews or actual like just tech publication reviews? Yeah, no, both, both. Like, so like you okay. said, getting the social proof here, uh, search, yeah. and search engine optimization being in, you know, one of these listicles that come out. But also when I didn't have many users, that was a way to get, you know, a couple hundred at a time. And people that are usually quite passionate, if they downloaded something from an article, that means the story resonated with them. And I just, yeah, I valued the the quality that came from it then. But again, it doesn't mean that they were like, that bump continued. It kind of happens and it goes away. It's just one of many strategies, basically. Yeah, and I remember you saying that like, hey, I started out with local media and then, yes. you know, went up where it's, and then I think that's the perfect strategy. Like, Luke, like start where you can honestly like reach out to that person. They're not getting pitched as much as TechCrunch or the time cosmopolitan these are like big publications if you start smaller you can eventually work your way up and a lot of the bigger bigger publications are looking at the smaller ones and then you can use the smaller publications as leverage for these bigger ones too because people want to cover the, especially the bigger companies they want to cover something that's hot and trendy that they know will drive clicks for them too yep you got it okay Herbie says could the could a product hunt be a good Booster, have you had any experience with product? Yeah, that's a great question, actually. I totally did do a product hunt launch. And same idea with the press releases. I think it brings in a specific type of crowd, people that are testing out new tech, and they are very open to also leaving a review, I think, and giving your their genuine feedback. They might not be in, like, for example, Rooted's, niche of, you know, somebody who struggles with anxiety and panic attacks. But I did do a very as strategic as possible product hunt launch. I remember I like didn't sleep the night before I started prepping weeks before. And I had a couple of friends in town that had done product hunt launches, not for apps, but we got together afterwards at the end of the day, because you also have to launch I think it was like the middle of the night that I had to like wake up to launch it or like I just didn't sleep. Mm -hmm. I, I remember being very tired <laughs> and then we all went out <laughs> afterwards at the end of the day, like all day I was pushing and sending to friends and, you know, trying to get engagement. And then finally we went out for uh, a drink because we were like, it's done now. It's done. It's out there. Yeah. But yeah, it was a big deal for me too. the product hunt launch. Yeah, I saw some great is. blogs, by the way, if you look up how to do a successful product hunt launch, my friend Aiden Hornsby wrote a blog about it. So that's something that I refer to a lot. Yeah, uh, I will look it up and I will put it into comments. <laughs> I'll try to put it in the description. This is a few but, years ago now, though, because this would be back. <clears throat> yeah, I launched Rudik quite a few years ago, but yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, you did. 2018. Okay. Yes. Oh. That's the one. Now it's changed a bit. So you can, like Ganya said, 
it's going to depend on the type of people you might be able to get to ter- early tech investors early adopters things like that and they on they do allow you to schedule now so it's almost like you can schedule it but make sure you get all your friends ready for your product launch to make sure they they do all the upvotes on you you were able to get 200 plus because you want to make it to the home page and so that is a great way of doing it there product hunt too okay yeah hey one thing i want to quickly yeah go ahead sorry well afterwards you can be in the number of different collections within product hunt so tools for anxiety or tools for sleep and that's another Mm. thing that i get some downloads from not not a ton but but you know especially when you're starting out but it could be helpful too i love that yeah that's so true herpes says thanks (laughs) <laughs> All right. One thing I want to cover on the PR front, you know, one thing that's really worked for us is just looking through a publication that you want to get on, you know, let's see, I'm just picking on Ian or Vaughn right now and kind of looking through his profile a little bit. And usually what you can find is their email that will have it somewhere or just put them on LinkedIn and then kind of just start snooping around. I prefer to be super targeted in the publication to Adrian. I don't know, Luke, you had this question and kind of though. So here you can see his pitches right here, but the way I like to do it is find a reporter that has recently started at a bigger company they're not getting heavy pitches and then write them and say look exclusive to avon and be like rooted is coming out with a version i don't know 3.0 whatever it is and then you you pitch that person that's how we were able to get on TechCrunch, and it does require a lot of follow-up they're super busy they're getting a lot of pitches and then one thing that i did that i thought it was pretty creative was the last email this third email okay so i followed up sent the email followed up waited a couple of days, follow up third time. And I said, Hey, Yvonne, you know, which letter best represents your interest in the story? A thumbs up, thumbs B mm-hmm. thumbs down, C thinking about in deep poop emoji. And she laughed and she said, LOL, C, can we get on a call? And then we ended up getting on TechCrunch that way. So it requires a lot, a lot, a lot of work, but finally. Yeah. So much work, but that's yeah. such a good example. Okay. I want to talk about investment, but I'm going to save it for the second part of the show. Anything else you want to talk about um, before we hit the the app audit and the dad jokes portion of our interview? I think we covered what I wanted to chat about. If there's any other questions, happy to answer those or try to. Yeah, I love it. Okay. Let's go into my favorite part. No, this was my favorite part. Let's get it. I mean, we're going to get the fans the what they want, you know? They want the dad jokes. In our virtual summit, I know you missed it, but Ricardo was like, Hi, Anna, you got a joke? And then she did end up having a joke ready to go. And I was like, oh, it's virtual summit. I'm not going to do the jokey stuff here. But do you want to go first or you want me to go first? I'll go first. And yeah, okay. I just didn't know last time. So this time I'm prepared. No, I didn't so, ask either. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was it? Okay, okay. Uh, I was once offered a job at a salt and pepper factory, but I didn't end up taking it. Do you know why? How come? The work was too seasonal. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> Where's my sound effect? <laughs> it's not working. Oh, no, that is my fault. I wasn't even expecting it. I just. Thing? It was just what I do at the end of my no, own. I have it ready. I have this fancy soundboard. I don't know why it's not working. Is it just my input is wrong? No, I don't. I can okay. hear it. I can I hear it. Yeah, yeah, but it was coming out of the thing. Yeah, this wasn't working. Okay, that's a good one. I love it. Okay, I shared this on Instagram, but so I'll, I'll redo it. You had it memorized, Anya. I have to read it. It's on my phone. All right. Anya, I just got hospitalized due to a pick a peekaboo accident. They put me in the ICU. Hey, hey, hey. nice. <laughs> okay. right, I, I got... thought my joke was better for A. Well, no, no, we'll, we'll save for round two, but we'll oh, okay. put A if you thought Anya's two joke rounds. was better. Put S, two rounds. Anya, I, I was in. Whoever loses has to sync song. And then the, the winner gets to pick the song. What do you think? Share it on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds terrifying. It is. 
Hey, early votes are towards your way. Okay. So you can say, you know, right. you're winning you right guys. now. All right. All right. Miguel's like, come for the ASO, stay for the dad jokes. Exactly. My yes. friend, uh, got to keep it lively. Okay. Let's get into youth. Uh, I think that's the name. Actually, if you guys want us to take a look at your app in a future live stream, just go to appmasters.com slash audit, appmasters.com slash audit. And Herbie, I know you're here, but please, after the audits, let me know whether it worked, whether it didn't work. We'd love to have you on a future live stream and share any wins or losses. So I don't expect to, I'm not assuming to know it all, but yeah, let us know if you need that. So Mutha says ASO to increase downloads. I'm going to take a look at, I'm going to assume his app. It's a diary app. Daily diary with lock. Anything on you? You're the guest, so I'll let you go first. Anything you see off this from ASO perspective? Yeah, so it stands out right away. And this is Google Play, mm -hmm. and I'm probably more focused on App Store ASO. So mm -hmm. let me know if this is different. But I wouldn't use diary twice uh, on the App Store. That wouldn't be effective anyway. So you are losing out on another potential keyword in that prominent, prominent place there. And it actually looks like you use diary and journal in your first screenshot. So I would just replace the second diary with journal. It's like a way oh, to get that yes. in. Yes, I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just with the about part there, like in the, yeah. there, it does read a little funny to start. It kind of does seem like you're packing in as many keywords as possible. And sometimes mm -hmm. that's obvious to the user. So you still just, in my opinion, right? I don't, this is just my opinion, but you want to make it quite nice and readable for the user. And of course, you're thinking of app store optimization, but you still want to let people really understand what you're doing. And this seems like a lot at once. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Yeah. And if the main you know, and feature, I think yeah. No, no, go for it, please. It seems like we're talking about how the there's a lock on the diary, and that's a really prominent and important mm -hmm. feature for the app. I feel like there'd be a really easy way to put a lock on the app icon. Oh, yeah. That's a great idea. I love that. I love that. Okay. What what, the thing I was going to share, well, so diary with, like, if I do put diary, one of the things I want to look at from Google Play's perspective and even Apple is the auto correct or auto complete, I should say. So you can see diary with fingerprint lock, diary with lock password. This is a primary feature that you have. These might be better keywords, diary with lock. I know you're kind of going with that right here, but I would try to do some research. I've personally found, now I have you know a lot of great relationships with all the ASO companies, but I personally found that App Radar has tends to have a more accurate sense of the Google Play data in terms of traffic and competition. So I would look at these keywords, diary with fingerprint lock, diary with lock, diary with lock password, put them into App Radar, see what the traffic and comp competition is. And just like I, you know, like figure out what's lower competition, see what you can rank for it. Because when I did my research before this app, I'd see rank really high for diary or anything related to diary. Now I could have just missed it, but that's something to think about too. And then I can pull out your short description, but I'll, I'll pause here in case you wanted to talk about anything. I was also going to say congrats on getting to 50K downloads. That's really good. Yeah, job. that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, really cool. Yeah. yeah. I guess one more thing. I know to your early. Uh, mm -hmm. If you go to when the app was updated, because I noticed this earlier, if you look at when it was last updated, I think it was a while ago. So one thing that I do with Rooted is just try to make sure I get oh, right. at least an update out once a month. Yeah. So that also helps with ASO and it doesn't have to be a huge update, but any update helps, I think. Is it just because so that users know that you're actually committed to this app? Or why do you think that is the case? I think it's also part of the algorithm, like the mm. like Google Play and App Store, knowing that you're updating it. Have you come across that? Uh, I think I it does. I, anything about the? I haven't. I don't know. I haven't tested that enough to say one way or the other. I just think it's. 
I think from a user standpoint, I always feel like, okay, if it's been updated recently or these in-app events, right? Like it shows that you're committed to this app versus yeah. anything else. Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then I looked at your subtitles. So you might want to be careful, like diary journal with lock. I like it. I would probably lean in on the diary and the journal aspect of it, the to-do list scheduler, all that stuff. Probably not as interesting unless, I mean, these are all really competitive keywords in your short description so i try to come up and just go all in on diary i mean this is how i would do your aso strategies diary with fingerprint lock and lock password that would be in my short description i try to go all in on that and then one other note before i shut up again is look at your youtube let's take a quick look i know on the on google having a video tends to help from what i've seen and then what I would also do is on YouTube, there's these keyword fields. There's a title, there's a description. I would optimize the YouTube metadata for the right keywords using your ASO data. And then, so you have this, right? Like put in the, the fact that you have the lock stuff again, right? You wanna optimize the YouTube meta description for to help your ASO and you kind of are doing this, this keyword stuff. So it feels like you're doing that, but I think, in terms of the to-do planner, I would just go all in on the diary aspect of it with lock screen and all that stuff. Oh, here, what I would say is since I can see some of your your stuff, your keywords, not just these generic terms, but you want to put your competitors because what you want to also do is hack this. So show up on similar apps because I do know that Google Play, the Google Play Explorer, you'll get downloads through that. And that's where this is coming from, the similar hacks. Up. Any, anything else you want to add on this before we take a look at the app? Nope. That's, okay. that's great. You need to break a tie. Yash, I'm not going to let you vote twice. It's 3 3 on you. All right. All right. Let's take a look at the app. Just a quick little update on the score. Oh, no. Be able to connect. I had to connect the whole time. Well, let me try it one more time. And we'll take a quick look at the app and give you any feedback. Oh, see, my network sucks right now. Okay. Do this real quick sorry about this no worries you don't actually make people sing do you it's a lip sync you know what i'm gonna pick i'm a big boy band fan so i'm gonna i'll be picking something around that oh it's on sorry i was on airplane mode i don't even know how to do that on android Jeez, louise okay this should be working let's take a quick look at the app and then we'll We'll take a look at Herbie's app. Herbie's here. I don't think Matu is here. So we got to get to Herbie. That's more important. <laughs> Battery optimization. Wow, I don't, I don't know if this is a, I don't know what, if this is an app thing or if this is an Android thing, but anyways. It's like battery optimization, current system can prevent the app from working properly, including repeat tasks and blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's fix it. Hmm. I'll deny. Yeah, it's probably not the best pop-up to see when you download a new app. But I, I also so don't it looks know. Like the yeah, I agree. But it looks like the first screen we see is this, this paywall. Yeah, that's a, a huge, huge discount for the yearly. It's almost the price of the monthly. Yeah. yeah. I imagine that's effective, but I'd be curious to hear. I've never discounted something so much. Have you, Steve? Yeah. I mean, I like to keep things. So I do feel like when I'm figuring out pricing, I want to make one really look valuable and like mm -hmm. a huge, this is where the value is, right? Because I feel like when we, we want options, we don't want just one option, but we want to see where the value is and where's where I'm going to get the, like the best deal, right? We're all these deal hunting. So I don't mind this. I think what I would want to do is have an onboarding. We have this AB test that somebody did where he, he had a paywall. That was the first screen. And then he added three additional screens just to lead the user into and talk about the app, then show the paywall. And he saw a 200% increase when he did that. So have an onboarding sequence that just reminds people what the app does, you know, play up the features that people are looking for, meaning the diary with a lock password, right? 
-hmm. your your thoughts will be yours if i'm thinking about a diary i want to make sure nobody reads it unless i'm dead then i don't really care but like you know i want to make sure nobody reads it so that's what i would be playing up one more time and then hit them with the upgrade to pro and i think with the upgrade to pro like i don't know what i'm really getting by paying you so what i would do is just play up all those features like what Anya was saying, like all these little features aren't critical. She's mission focused, but like dark mode. All right, you want dark mode? You'll pay for it, right? Like you want to play up that I'm able to get instead of just enjoy all themes. So like have the password code or whatever that lock feature is, play that up more because I don't feel like I'm getting a whole lot by just paying you the 10. Now, granted, it's only $10, but I don't feel like I'm getting a whole lot of features by going to pro. Yeah. Agreed. It's pretty abrupt. I'm not really sure what I'm signing up for yet. Yeah. And I do think I would want some ads on here because it's Android. Not a lot of people are going to pay for this. Excited mm -hmm. about my doing a Spartan race tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And scared. Oh, this is a task? Yo, I didn't even think it was a task. I thought it was a journal. See, you see, I'm thinking diary the entire time, and then you're you're showing me a task. I don't know about that one. Yeah, and also maybe some onboarding to kind of know what we're doing in here and and which steps we should yeah. be taking to start could be helpful. Directing yeah. the user towards a good way to get started. What is this? That's the diary. It says the diary's at the top there. Yeah, I didn't know what the 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 crown was. What does it do? Oops. I don't know. I'll try to tap it. What's happening? I've seen a crown represent the premium subscription, but I don't know if it's doing that. Yeah, yet. same. That's what I was uh, expecting the paywall. Paywall. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah, I like that. I like that. That was a pretty neat feature. Before I did the, mm -hmm. I had tapped on the lock screen to add a, a lock and then they asked me for a review. I think it's a good step to ask for the review. I've also seen like adding reviews during the onboarding process actually works pretty well too. So oh. I'm gonna share that with everybody. One, two, three, four. Oh, okay. What's your favorite color on you? I don't oh teal. Rooted's color. Teal. Oh teal. Right. I like that. I'm gonna pick red. The okay. design, I think otherwise, yeah, it just strikes me that some of the text is like super, super small, and it might be the way I'm seeing it right now. But I, yeah, yeah, just in terms of making it like more accessible for every user, even with Rooted's font, it's like a 12 or 13, and we sometimes get feedback from people who might be have struggled uh, seeing text that small. So that's something to consider. It's like really small in here. That's good feedback. That's good feedback. I love it. Yeah, I just think it's weird when you load me on the task and it's everything that I've read was all about diary. And now you're loading me into a task. And the, for when I hit this, it's a yeah. task. It seems a little bit weird for me. I think you're building too many features. If it's diary and you're, you have diary, like focus on diary, like focus all your keywords on diary and then build a to-do list planner. You have the freaking code already. Like do that and just separate the two. Like, I don't know why everybody needs to combine everything. I don't think, in my opinion, we're looking for an all-in-one app. We like the fact that we can move to different apps. Just my opinion, though. And you do one thing well. OK. Ready for round two? I'm going to yeah, call that a tie. Unless somebody wants to break the tie, it's 3-3. Three, three. Come on. Well, I'll give you the win, OK? Yash said A+. Plus. So Yash voted twice for you. I'll count that. Bro. All right, Anya, <laughs> do you want to, let me make sure. This is not working, huh? No, none of this is working, okay. okay that's ready, locked theme. and loaded. Yeah, so I'm gonna keep the theme seasonal, pun intended. Okay. And why did Mrs. Claus tell Santa to bring an umbrella? Because of the rain, dear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shoot. Don't pick a hard song. It's <laughs> all I'm going to say. Okay. Don't pick a hard song. That is going to, oh man, that's a good one. All right. Anya, guess who I bumped into on my way to get my glasses fixed? Who? Everybody. 
Maggie, S, you know the drill. And then the loser has to do a little lip sync battle that the winner will pick the song on and then share it on Instagram. All right. Let's embarrass ourselves a little bit and let's have some fun. All right, Herbie, we are on to you and we'll go through this pretty quickly. The So he's got a question about just general feedback. I'm a beginner. I had the idea for the app and now I had developed through Fiverr. Okay. I would love to know how that works. This is now the beta, beta version. The app is meant to make people happier and content with the life quality LQT app. You find out what you need to be happier. Thank you very much. All right. Cool. So general feedback, you know, feedback on the app, sir? When I was looking at this on my phone, I found the text and the iPhone screenshots to be super, super small. And it was really hard to read. Like even the scientifically proven was like just kind of not so visible uh, when I was looking at it on mobile. So that is one thing that I would share. Steve? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know there's a delay, so I'm like real being patient with everything. Yes, I agree. Like you want, what I love about this and what we've actually found too, Anya, be more effective is whatever that main keyword or that unique benefit that you're trying to add to the app, make it big and bold as your first screenshot. We've actually seen that win. So like for you, as an example, like if you had reduced stress, calm and anxiety in here versus just panic attack relief well guess what panic attack relief would be the winner because you rank really well for panic attack and so that screenshot one when we ran it for a cl different client i'm just using you as example those weren't the, mm -hmm. the real examples but that's what i would do right and you have it so small herbie herbie herbs it's so tiny so like if it's mm -hmm. scientifically proven make it big make it bold, yes. make it bold of what you're trying to really highlight, whether it's a mood tracker, whether it's helping people feel happy. You know, when I think of apps that make me feel happier, I'm like always like, how, like, why, how, how are you doing this? And when I see scientifically proven, it's like, really? Like what is scientifically proven? So I'd rather like uncover it, you know, like, asking somebody why three or four times you you end up really discovering like why are you scared of the spartan race oh i'm afraid of embarrassing myself like, you know eventually after three or four whys i'm like oh i'm afraid of embarrassing myself doing a rope climb and not being able to do any of these obstacles so you figure out why you're scared instead of just being like i'm scared right so like ask your like why are you what are you doing like what are you doing to help me feel happier herbs totally so Looks like it's a mood tracker. If it's a mood tracker, just that big and bold. You know, okay. All right, let's, yeah, and like, I don't know, what do you think about LQT? He's been calling it LQT a lot. What do you think about that acronym? I think, fine with it. Yeah, people won't necessarily get the acronym. I would use the full keywords. Yeah. Yeah, and I would, you know, like, here's what I like to do. I don't like sharing my bookmarks because I'm like, ah, I always look at everybody's bookmarks when there's available. So I like to hide mine, but I would look at the keywords too, Herbie, and just figure out what is a better keyword. I know the, a lot of the keywords that you're going after are super, super competitive. And mm -hmm. so figure out what's the right keyword that the lower, especially if it's new and you're just starting out and you want to get those initial downloads, you know, PR. When you said it, PR, ASO, and finding the right keywords that are going to help you rank and drive those downloads without you spending any money. Mm -hmm. Happiness. I love using app follow because I love doing keyword research this way. And I'll just throw in happiness as a start. But like, this is how I do keyword research. I just hit that little I button and then I go here and then I look at all these particular keywords. How we feel might be interesting. Mood tracker. And then I try to focus on these keywords, like self-love maybe. I don't know what MDF is, but these become better options for me in more of the 20, let's say 25 to 35 range. They tend to have a little bit less difficulty than all the 50s and 60s because just like you did, Herb, everybody's going after the 50s and 60s and nobody's really paying attention to the 30s and 40s. Or I'm sorry, the 20s and 30s. You want to be at least... 30 if you can help it because i found that 20s just doesn't drive that many downloads okay 
Shall we get into the app? Yeah, let's do it. Anya, you you better come up with round three because I've been crushing you in this this round. All right. So just get ready for round three of the dad jokes. And Nicholas, yes, there will be. This is all on YouTube. It'll be on forever. Okay. Way past our time. All right. Let's get into Herb's app. I like it. So I don't know how you feel, Anya, but I would want to like almost feel like this is could be three screens and just one clear. You know, there's this I did. I read this book about like, how do you do great presentation? It's like, don't do bullet points. One slide, one message. And I almost feel that way with an onboarding flow. One slide, one message, one unique benefit. Yeah, there's quite a bit of text here. That's a bit much, yeah. but yeah. And it's hard. It's hard as a founder because to you, to you, everything is important, right? Like, you know that it's important to you. So it is hard to kind of simplify and reduce the amount of text. But uh, I'd say this is a lot for just opening the app for the first time. I made a horrible joke, so I'm glad you did. <laughs> I didn't catch it. It's the internet. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just said you're decreasing my life quality by making me read so much. All right, bad right. joke. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right here. Right here. Right, uh, I'm not sure what to do here because you're the goal should probably get me to onboard and start right now, but it's also saying the secret mm -hmm. to getting happy fast and daily reminder. And I'm not sure Agreed. which you want me to click. Agreed. Too many buttons. One message, yeah. one action per slide. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you're already asking if I set the reminder, but I didn't even know I was being asked to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Break all those up into like one slide, one onboarding sequence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here, I don't know what you've seen lately, Steve, with like payment pages, mm -hmm. but I find it should be above the fold, like the actual call to action. Have you seen that? Like I know there's a trend now to have longer payment pages, is it typically still above the fold, the first call to action or yes. not? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because even it if I click on the, the yeah, if you click on that right now, I was so surprised with Rooted about how some people just don't scroll. I would at first get feedback on our lessons being like, hey, the text is cut off. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, it's literally a scroll thing. So now I have the text in slides. So users scroll to the right. Because yeah, for some reason, mm. many people just don't scroll down. Yeah. Yes. You want, look, nobody cares about all the premium features, like lead with the benefit, right? It is feel happier. 96% of people who use LQT feel happier in seven days. Right. And then all this, all this stuff right here, put at the bottom. So lead with the benefits, then have your payment plans then have the scientifically proven then have these bullet points i do think the longer i think the other thing that you're missing here is some social proof i know you're just starting out her but like what are the reviews even the social proof is hey guys this is what i was dealing with like anya right like when she first built that this is what i was doing and this is what have really helped me i wanted to build something that really helped me this is using the same strategies that really helped me build it and i think it builds that connection with people and so even if that is your social proof that's fine so I don't mind the pricing here as well, but I would probably bump this to $19.99. I just find that the lower your price point, the it's almost counterintuitive that people feel like low, less about your app because like, well, is this app so cheap? You know, like depending on the category, obviously, but I think for an app like this, like Mood Tracker, if you look at your competitors, they're probably charging a ton more than $17.99 if I'm not mistaken, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's sort of how I felt about the previous app with the 90% discount. I was like, oh, that it it was so big that it almost made it like devalued in a way. Yeah. What are you, a scam? Yeah. <laughs> so I like it. Yeah, everything it looks like uh oh, so the things I would be pay paying attention to, Herb, is all right, how many people view this page on first open? The second thing is what is this page's conversion rate? So on one of our apps, we're getting anywhere in the teens. 
the 13 to 14%. Now it is a hard paywall, meaning you can't exit. You don't have to just leave the app, but at the same time, we're getting a pretty high conversion rate. You want to try to get at least five to 10%. If you're not just really don't worry. I mean, get some downloads because you need data, but really pay attention to install the paywall view. And then the conversion rate on this paywall is the thing that I would be really, really thinking about. If you need to spend a little bit, spend a little bit just to get those downloads on Apple search ads is where I would spend the money, but then figure out what those numbers are. Like how many people see this paywall, how many people actually pay because at 20 bucks, it should be a pretty decent conversion rate. Okay. Let's get into the app. Ooh, really busy dude. Yeah. Lots going on. We need some information, it says. That's good. Fighting the cold. Day quality. Ooh, here I feel like if you're already saving something, it should maybe take you to a success page or have you exit the screen yeah. as opposed to saving. Cause then I'm here and I might yeah. keep clicking because I don't know what else to do. Yeah. Agreed. Great. So it does the same thing. Yeah, you got to fix that. Yeah. What? And there's just a lot going on. So I kind of feel like I don't know where to best start. So I'd maybe look at like my highest retaining users. What tool do they gravitate towards? And, and can I get my new users to, to go towards that as well? Maybe some tips or something. I think I've come around being more aggressive with the paywall, like, and just showing it on second open too. So if you're going to have a freemium product, just keep showing the paywall, like let people exit, you know, you're not doing anything funky. You're not forcing them to pay. So I would show this paywall on every open. And I think, you know, headway is the most aggressive, but I think it is a, I have seen that work with other clients where they show the paywall every single time you open it and does lead to more conversions. People don't want to pay. They'll, they'll know, right. They'll know to tap the X. It's like watching an ad. I know I got to skip YouTube, skip ad, you know, all this stuff. We know where to go. And so, but it is like, Hey, I'm liking this app. Let me just use it. So the more paywall views you can get, the more revenues you'll likely get to mm -hmm. don't feel bad about it. Yep. Okay. All right. Herb, keep it, keep us posted. Anything else you want to cover on you on this app? Uh, no, no, I think that's everything okay. I've got to jump, but oh. okay. I'll let you jump off topic. Uh, you want to do one more dad joke? Do you have one more? Yeah, I think we have to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. I like it. All right. You, you want right. to go first well, or you, is... you know, we'll let you jump and I'll let you know. Speaking of jumping, what happens when a frog <laughs> okay. car dies? He needs a, a jump. Frog what dies? His, if his car dies. Oh, his car dies. Okay. What happens? Yeah. He needs a jump. And if that doesn't work, he'll need to get it towed. T O A D. <laughs> I like it. All right. All right. Anya, I got one more from my, the tiebreaker round. My neighbor blamed me. Actually, my neighbor blamed my gravel for making him fall. But it was his own dumb asphalt. There it is. Put A if you thought on your one and then put S if you thought I won. Once again, guys, if you wanted to learn more, go to just search for Rooted, R-O-O-T-D in the app store and go to rooted.io if you want to learn more about Anya and the great app she's built. Super amazing. Love the UI. Love all the passion and energy she put into a, a really great app. It's going to really help you with your anxiety relief, any panic attacks you might be having. Anya, if the audience wants to follow up with you personally and say, thank you for coming on, do you want to send them anywhere else? Probably to my LinkedIn page, or you can follow me on Twitter awesome. at Anya Margaret. You can find me through the Rooted app page, but I'm going to make an effort to be more active there. And I do respond to messages and everything. So yeah, happy to hear from people. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And all that is linked up into your YouTube description, into the YouTube description as well. So awesome. find a way to thank the guests like I'm about to do now. Anya, thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. And sorry for jumping. I get to uh, talk to Google Play right no, now I and hear my it. story. So we'll see. Nice. We'll see how that goes. Right, I'll have to know. look out for you then. Uh, but do All we know right. who won? Because this is very important. I'll let you know. Right now you have one initial vote. Come on, people. We need some <laughs> votes here. All right. You just got to okay. jump. I'll stick around. 
I'll stick around, but you guys got to vote. Should I choose a song for you to lip sync? Okay. Just mess with me. I'll DM you. I don't want to keep you any longer. That's why I was like. <laughs> <laughs> my, you can tell what my priorities are. I'm like, I need to get Steve to lip sync. Okay. <laughs> right now it's tied. Okay. I love your priorities, by the way. <laughs> uh oh. All right. I might I'll have see. to pick on you. You should do Attention by Justin Bieber just for fun. Attention. Okay. I'll pick one too. Because, right. But I'm winning right. right now. Okay. Just so you know. All right. Talk See you later. guys. This was awesome. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you for having right. me. Bye. Bye, Anya. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Her, her, her priorities are more important. Google's more important than us. That's awesome, man. All right. Keep those votes coming in and I'll, I'll take a screenshot and send them. So Noah asked, Hey, off topic here, but something I recent noticed I recently noticed is Rocket Money previously true bill bypasses Apple's 30% revenue by directly debiting users' account, connected checking accounts. Very interesting thoughts. No, I think that's gonna be a big trend actually. I'm doing a I shared it on Twitter, but I'm doing a office hours with Bravo and their squad. And we're gonna talk about off, you know, off Apple, off platform type of stripe. I don't have a payment system. I just called the truck, but like, I don't have a bunch of knowledge on this, but I do think that is the trend as, you know, app developers are getting smart and Apple's relaxing some of those policies too, like Netflix, Hulu, all them, they take payment outside of the app stores and even Spotify being the biggest one. Right. So I do think that if you can do it, it is probably going to be an interesting strategy and a trend moving forward as 30% seems like a steep amount for apple so stay tuned for that all right all right looks like we're tied fellas all right come on one more two more let's get to the first two four that's out of seven come up with that all right the other thing that i've been talking about as i'm waiting for you guys to vote because i do want that and anya is very serious as you can see about this is what she mentioned about the app store reviews and getting those early on i'm coming up with a different strategy for app store reviews noah shout out to you but you told me you know that review asking for that review prompt during the first open is working hope you're okay with me saying this by the way but like i've heard of this from other people as well not just noah but i know you're in the comments so i want to give you a shout out but like I'm coming up with a different strategy to really, and Herb, this would be beneficial to you to really hack that, right? And get more app store reviews. So I'll share that with you guys. I want a bit more data. I've been sharing it privately with the App Masters Elite Group and some of our clients. It's this new launch strategy that I feel like it's worthwhile that is really geared towards getting a lot of app store reviews on first open organically not pay, not do anything. So, but keep in, keep in mind. Thank you, Adrian. All right, Adrian, I know you and I are going to talk soon. So I'm really committed to you, dude. All right, let's, let's tally the votes. We got Anya, A, Yash, you traitor. Noah, thank you, Noah, Herb, S, Ricardo, you traitor. Luke, you traitor. Three, two. All right. We need one more off topic. Adrian, I missed a joke, but let's go for S. I love it. All right, one more vote. Uh, Romaine says, I mean, I'm not going to answer your question until you vote. You got to vote too. All right. Off topic. Also, I noticed that more than 15% between sales and proceeds around 22% it's due to changes from Apple. I am paid in euros. So while monthly, mostly happening in USD, any thought? Uh, I don't, I think you're trying to say like, there's a big difference between sales and proceeds. It was, I'm not sure exactly why that's happening remain but i yeah i'm not exactly sure what the difference is are you saying like okay so like obvious sales means how much you're actually generating from the app proceeds is after apple's take so that's probably why you see that 15 to 22 percent difference i don't know why it's 22 percent, but like proceeds means your end minus apple's take so sales is great, but when you're doing an analysis on like revenue per download, you should take into account proceeds versus sales. Sales means how much you generated, but <laughs> Apple takes their thing and then gets you to, that gets you to the proceeds, right? Now I'm getting spam. Hey, I made it. I think spam means that I'm getting big, <laughs> all right? So let me see if I can take 
All right, so S, thank you, Romain. All right, any other votes? Last chance, any other questions before this spammer goes crazy? I'll have to tell Anya that I ended up winning and then pick up a song for her to leap, lip sync to. Got here, taking some screenshots just in case she needs proof. Thanks. Steve, by the way, Rocket Money is doing it all in app. No, Yeah, no, but like Rocket Money is probably not the best example because they do tie into your checking. They do tie in your credit card. So like, obviously you need to give them access so they can see which subscriptions you need to cancel. So I don't know if the best analogy, because it's easier for them. It's a natural integration for them to be like, Hey, you know, we got access to your stuff. Just, we're just going to pull out money. Right. That's why I was like the off app stuff is more interesting. Like I've seen other apps do this like Hulu and Spotify because it's not a natural integration with your checking accounts, but yeah. No worries about sharing. Thanks, man. Okay, cool. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so next week we've got Tom and we're going to talk all about, oops, sorry, my bad. Let me look at my calendar real quick. All right, we got Tom Hammond. He's been on the show before. He's going to come back. We're going to talk all about how do you use UA and marketing into your product experience so you can design the ideal user experience from first interaction into a fully retained product usage. So, and that, uh, live ops as well. So surprising experiences and drawing users back. And I think that's going to be the, the thing that I'm going to be particularly focused on is I think I've been pretty good about UA and first user experience and onboarding. I feel like I'm pretty locked in, in that regard. I think the, the other thing that I really want to focus on in 2023 is how do we bring users back into the app, whether it's email marketing, whether it's live ops, whether it's whatever it is, right? Like I really want to focus in on that because despite a super high conversion rate, you're still, there's this larger pool of people that didn't buy your app, but doesn't mean they don't like you. They just didn't buy the first time. So how do we re-engage these guys instead of always focusing on getting new users into the app? So I'm going to be focused on that. And that's what next week we're going to cover every Friday. We're back until probably about, I'm going to be here even through right before Christmas. So I'll be here every week. Thank you guys for coming on. I appreciate you guys and look forward to 2023. Oh, and if you got any success stories that you want to share with the community and the entire fam, reach out to me because I would love to do the the end of the year show highlighting some of your wins as well. So reach out to me if you're interested in that. All right, till next week, have a great weekend.